tonight. Welcome. It is episode 146, and yes, it is Friday Eve, Thursday night, for those who like to keep track of the days of the week. And once again, we're back on here full-time. Yes, Tuesday, we were not on only for technical difficulties, but no problem because we are back on here live tonight and also live from the LG Direct Sales Solution Studios in beautiful Tampa, Florida, where it's got to be about 102 outside still with the heat index. It has been extremely hot, but it's okay because a lot of us who live down here Love this weather this time of year. And why not when the beach is right around the corner? So it's all good stuff. Not so much for the Bucks because one of our players, and Dylan will give us the update about it later on, but one of their players might be spending his time on the beach. Not a great thing for the Bucks the way to get their season kicked off or at least training camp kicked off. For the Eagles so far, everything looks good. Nick Sirianni talked about with the crew not too long ago, about two days ago when they had their press conference and talked about what the expectations are for the season and – Fuji's best friend, Howie Roseman, stated that, yes, the Eagles are still in a lot of room for help, and they're not done yet. So we'll see what the Eagles end up doing. So lots to get into, but more importantly, as we kick off the Eagles training camp, the great thing tonight we will have is from the late, great Pete Fios <clears throat> comes on not only to – or sorry, Melissa will come on on behalf of her father – but not only that, we'll get into the history of Melissa and her father, how it was to be a child around an NFL champion. And not only that, as she continues to learn more and more about her dad and the legacy that she continues to do on behalf of her father. So it's going to be a lot of good talk tonight about Eagles football, about the NFL in general. But we can't wait to get to these stories. So it's going to be an exciting evening to talk about Phillies. Kind of up and down. We'll see. There's plenty of games still left in the season. They're still fighting for the last wild card spot. Anything can happen. But right now, the Mets and Braves are obviously doing battle for first place. So, again, tons to get into, including, let me not forget, about the Kyler Murray contract. And was it worth, and the stipulations inside that contract, and whoever leaked it out, shame on him, because now everybody knows what he wasn't doing when he was supposed to be doing like more normal players end up doing. So with that all being said, we can't wait to get the show underway here. Of course, we have the Godfather in the house, Dylan, Sean, and Melissa. So with that all being said, welcome to Broad Street South, episode 146, from our 38 states here in the U.S. to overseas, to South America, including Puerto Rico. Welcome, everyone. I'm Angel. This is Broad Street South. It comes back here to the dynamic. There it is. Automatically back there. So with that being said, also, let's not forget the intro for Gene Gene, the dancing machine, also known as the Godfather. Here he is, Mike Fuji. First of all, are off for nothing. Angel, let us get this party rocking. How are you? Broad Street South is back. Football season is among us. Let's get this party rocking. Angel, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. As I said earlier, it is really hot down here in Tampa, but no worries because as long as you have the AC in the studio, the way it's been cranked up, I think it must be about 69 degrees here in the house, only because you got to try and keep it as cool as you can in the studio with everything that goes on around here. You got to keep it cool. But Fuji, so far, good news from the Eagles training camp, not one injury. And I'm knocking on wood here on the desk, mm. but not an injury. Well, Looking good so far for Nick and the bunch. What's that? Oh. I said, by your tongue, let's not even go down that route. No, I don't. Believe me. Not at this uh, point because, we're, they're, listen, all we care about is obviously to have and enjoy a good season. And even having a good season, by the way, I want to remind everybody that if you're down here in Tampa and you love your Eagles, you know that the home of the Philly of the South, the Eagles fan club, is at Tampa Joe's at 9316 Anderson Road. And with that being said, the Eagles, or excuse me, Philly to South is planning an Eagles kickoff party September 11th. So if you guys are in the area from 11 till 5 o'clock that evening, there's going to be a tent. There's also going to be a DJ. 
We're going to have, the, obviously, the games on uh, on the TVs as well. So if you're in the area, please come down. 9316 Annis Road, Tampa Joe's. It's going to be a great kickoff party this season. Of course, me, the rest of Broad Street South Gang, well, I will be there. Everyone else will be virtually. So it'll be a great time, and I'll get into more detail as the show goes along here. So for those who listen to the audio downloads out of the house, if you're listening to this, once again, you can come down to 9316 Anderson Road in Tampa, Florida. Hop's coming to jump over from the airport for the Eagles kickoff party. So with that being said as well, I am going to add here to the bunch. It is Dylan Spaulding, number one, the Toronto Blue Jays employee, the local tablet correspondent, the Houston Texans lover, and he'll give us the updates about what's going on with the Bucks. And without all being said, Dylan, how are you this evening? Um, how you guys doing, guys? Hey, I can't hear you guys at all. Um, I'm not too sure what's going on, but nonetheless, um, I'm actually uh, gonna try to reset. But just wanna just wanna get you guys a quick uh, saying. You know, obviously tough day for the Bucks. Ryan Jensen, unfortunately. Uh, out unfortunately with an injury, so that's a huge loss for the Bucks. And uh, you know, looking forward to this great weekend we have in store. Obviously, congratulations to Philly getting WrestleMania 40 coming into town, so that's exciting. But uh, yeah, a lot of exciting stuff should be here on the show tonight. Well, thank you, Dylan. On, on the live feed, I can hear you on the live feed, so uh, hopefully you can get i guess trying to adjust your mic there see what happens to your headphones but i know we can definitely hear you and i can hear you on the live feed right. so that's a good thing well he'll come back I so can. let me let me take him away for a second he'll end up coming back here but also our sports contributor that yes once again there we can see the beard and no eyes but it's okay because i guess you don't need it there it is sean and sean oh, kilrain oh, joining us of course from philly as well sean how are you this evening good angel how about yourself how are you feeling Good, good. Can have no complaints. Life is good, and we're planning on having an awesome show today. So coming to us from Valdosta, and also a legend within herself. Well, let me bring Dylan back up here before we bring in Melissa. Dylan, is that much better? I guess he'll let us know here in a second, but we'll bring Dylan back here in a second. He's up there on the screen. But more importantly for this evening, again, as the Eagles training camp gets kicked off, Talk about some nostalgia this evening. Let me bring up this young lady here on the screen, Melissa, as she joins us here this evening. First of all, Melissa, thank you for joining the program this evening. We do appreciate it. And the history that you have to share in the stories, I'm pretty sure an hour's worth of time wouldn't even be enough to even begin. But with that, thank you for being on the show. We do appreciate it. Thank you for coming on, Melissa. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on, Melissa. Now, if anyone would like to find Melissa, yes, you can find her on social media, on Twitter and in Instagram, as well as on Facebook. But more importantly, no, I don't expect for anyone to go down to Valdosta State University, but she is the associate professor of dance. Yeah, <clears throat> she is the associate professor of dance. And we will get into some dancing later on, because as I said to Melissa earlier, I do like to dance. And for those, as we're behind the scenes, just to get everyone caught up, everybody knows... I love The Godfather, but The Godfather is even busting a move tonight. So we're going to have some music <laughs> later on. He's going to bring out this, his dance floor. And it's just, it's going to be a great night. Just just trust me, it's going to be a great night. But Melissa, I wanted to start off with um, one other than with, with your career and as far as with the dance. We know as far as you tell us backstage uh, when you started dancing. But for those who don't know, before we get into your dad's legacy, I know one part, as you talked about in the film, on the NFL films, that you said that your dad, or people, excuse me, people would say that you always look serious when you're dancing, and you said you attribute it because of your dad and the hard work that he would put in himself, and he was always serious. So to let everyone know, when did you start dancing, for one? And then two, how long have you been dancing? Wow, that that is good. I'm gonna, Melissa. I'm gonna take you out for a second, bring you back, only because for some reason on live feed. Let me let me bring you back here again. Let's see if uh, for some reason on the live feed. Oh no, hold on. 
see, I can see you here on the screen, but for some reason on the live feed, I can't see you. So we're going to, we're going to keep talking. <clears throat> Fuji, matter of fact, I'm going to turn it over to you there for a second while I make sure I see what's going on here in the background. So Melissa, uh, just to dive into, you know, your dad, Pete Theos, who was inducted in the uh, NF NFL Hall of Fame in 1970. Could you tell us a little bit about his career and how you're keeping his legacy going to this day? Oh, either what, either what, oh, that's totally up to you. Yes. Trying to now get there. crazy if you can because once i add you i can see you here but unfortunately on the live feed i can't yeah i know i'm trying to bring everybody back now i'm trying to bring everybody back here but for some reason your camera's not coming up so do me a favor could you exit out melissa and then come back in let's see all right melissa's gonna come back in so sorry you guys again New stuff, and sometimes things end up happening. So I can see the comments coming in fast and furious. Tom, I see you out there. We might just get the comments in here before Melissa comes back in. <clears throat> Let's go to Fuji's house for the Eagles game. May not be a pretty story. <laughs> yeah, what nah. did I miss? Well, unfortunately, you missed it. we're going to have to go back here from the very beginning because I know you guys couldn't hear or see her, as my producer was telling me as well. Sometimes, oh, here we go. Let's see if I can see her. If I can see you now on the feed, give me a second, Melissa. Okay. There it is. Now you're here at the feed. Okay. Now everybody can see you. There you go. Yay. <laughs> you're back. Yeah, I'm back. Definitely. All right. Yeah, my producer gave me the thumbs up as well. So, all right. So, for those who missed, all right, we're going to kind of revert backwards here because unfortunately, you end up missing a, a lot. So, Fuji, remember your question because again, no one, no one was able to, uh, no one was able to hear or see in the very beginning. So I'm going to go back to my question first. And then Fuji, you can go back to exactly what you were saying beforehand. So Melissa, for those who don't know, um, let us at least let everyone know, if you don't mind once again, that how long have you been dancing? And as I said before, and I'll just repeat it again for those who did hear it the first time around, is that your dad, Pete, he ended up, he always had, or he told you during the NFL films uh, video that I ended up seeing was that, you always had a serious look or your friends would always say that you always look serious when you're dancing. You attribute it to because of how hard your dad worked on his craft and being as good as he was. So if you can let everybody know, once again, when did you start dancing 
And then up until, at least at this point, if you still are dancing. Yeah, so I started dancing when I was two years early. Some some children start at three, some start at two. So um, it just depends on how early you're potty trained. So guitar. <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, so then I, you know, danced my whole time, danced professionally got my graduate degree in dance. Um, so I'm a prof dance professor now and I'm 48 and still dance. It's still, it's my career, my passion. And I'm very lucky that I can merge those two together. So. Now, the one thing before I turn my to, to food you before he asks his question again. So what, what exactly got you into as far as like in, into the dance theater or, or beginning dancing? Was it something that you would do just around the house? Like um, most kids end up doing, you know, playing around a little bit, but was it something that you knew that you wanted to do from a very early age? I think that, well, I was a little hyperactive growing up <laughs> and um, <laughs> like I literally was like swinging around the room. I had these two twin beds <clears throat> And I had like some curtains like in between each twin bed and I was playing like Tarzan, right? And I would like try to swing from one bed to the other and I broke, like I pulled all it cause I was like, you know, two or something like that. And I pulled the curtains down and I got into some serious trouble. Um, so my mom was like, uh, she's a little bit hyperactive. Like we need to get her energy. So they, and, and dad thought I would love and so they enrolled me in dance and time. Um, I did, I did both and I excelled at both of them, but I got way too tall for gymnastics. So, cause I'm tall. So it was just kind of silly for me to continue. And I had to make a decision as far as like where I wanted to go with my life and so it was a, it, it was, I don't know. I just have a lot of like injuries and stuff from gymnastics that I don't have from dance. I'm glad that I did it. It helped my dance, but yeah. So I just, I don't know. D Dad was always supportive and he just was like, you got to go, you know, you go dance. And he, he was just really into me dancing. Cause I guess, cause I couldn't really play football, you know, I mean, I probably could now, but or like if I was 30, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm trying right. to say? Like, like women are playing now, but, um, but I'm too old at this point, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think it was something he thought because he did take ballet, um, as an Eagle, like uh, some of the guys took, you know, dance classes, mm -hmm. which is a thing, um, to help their, their play. So he, he thought it was important for me to take. So. I mean, I'll say dance, dance and football has always been a thing because wasn't Lynn Swan big into dancing with the Steelers. So yeah, I, I know of players that. taking it and I know that it actually has helped a lot with their game. So I, I have, I've at least heard of those type of stories come about at least in, in the game of football with dance, helping players out and with certain things. Yeah, and I'm using dance right now to help people that have Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and um, dementia because that's what my dad had. And so I just am trying to give back using my um, talent in dance, my teaching, my teaching talent in dance too, and it's really rewarding. I volunteer and I've got these people moving around, and it's it's a whole method that I'm certified in, and there's big time research behind it too it's called improvement it's improvisational prompts and it's really fun to teach um and my friend christina soriano started it at wake forest university so it's hmm. it's really um it, like how it can help it can better but then it can also help someone heal um it's really it's it's I just, I've done it my entire life and I just, okay, so, yeah. 
Well, that's a, listen, it's, first of all, anything you end up doing that you want to do professionally, it, it, it everything takes discipline. We all know this. No matter what it is, the, the, the lifestyle you choose, the profession you choose, everything has to be done professionally. And I think from just, again, listening to the backstory and things that I read as far as what you've done in your career, I mean, obviously, it's meaningful. One is because you're passionate about it, but two, also because it, it you have to, once you hone in on something, again, that's near and dear to you, whether... If even if you knew it professionally, it's something that that mattered to you the most. Is the way I, you know, I like to to mention to other folks. But for you yourself to be able to put not only just your dance and as far as what you do in your career, but to add that towards your dad's legacy, it's another you know a, another way to express uh, as far as what dance does, whether it's in a community, whether it's in a recital, whether wh whichever way you look at it. But for what you've done for your dad to keep the legacy alive. And, and we'll get into that a little bit later on though. It's pretty incredible because even you doing it, going on tour to be able to do something like that. And just not only remembering exactly what you did, but the performance that you have to do over and over again. And I'm pretty sure there's gotta be a part in, and I'll ask, I guess like your dad, there's gotta be a feeling that you connect when you're on the stage and you're doing a performance, there has to be a connected. You feel every time you perform with your dad. Yes, definitely. And it's really interesting. My, my cast that does my the show that I created about dad, they really connect to me and my father as well. Interesting, because it is, it comes from a very vulnerable. Place. Um, I was healing my dad was in his last stages of the disease. And um, it was really it was healing, but it was hard. <laughs> and I wanted to do him justice, but then also show what Alzheimer's looked like. And, um, and so, yeah, I feel like I get to spend time with him. Whenever I do something that involves him, I get to con reconnect with him again. And it's really, really, uh, I don't know. I can't even describe it. Like, it's just something I feel inside. Um, I like I feel him with me, uh, you know, especially when I went to France and all that for the NFL films thing. I just felt he was there, you know, and there were little signs here and there. So, right. Yeah. No, but so someone asked a question here and they want to know what we were talking about as far as this evening. So Melissa Pios is joining us. Her father, Pete, was with the 1948-1949, long with the Eagles. I believe it was seven year career with the Eagles, but was with the 1948-1949. NFL championship team before they called it the Super Bowl. So when the Eagles have won back-to-back -back championships, her dad was part of it. And of course, he is inducted into the Hall of Fame. And Melissa is going to be what you shared with me earlier. <clears throat> Melissa will be going to the Hall of Fame this upcoming, not this weekend, but the following weekend, to speak on her father's behalf. And Melissa, to get into that a little bit, <clears throat> the prepare speech that you have and once again because it's like everything else when you perform obviously your dance it's going to be the same way with the performance as far as what you're going to say is the speech even though it's early to say but again you're you as you told your mommy you're discovering your dad more and more you want to learn more about him is there a moment that you feel that end up being emotional within your speech even before you come out on stage to speak on your dad's behalf well i'm not doing a speech in the enshrinees that that are getting inducted now. My mom and I go to all represent my dad. Okay. Um, and I talk to people and go, you know, go to different functions. I definitely, you know, I'm not going to get up and I've done a TEDx talk, but <laughs> in that only to get whatever it is you want to say but yeah no I don't know I I do get emotional if I do do if I go somewhere and give a talk about my dad or presentation or something it's right. it is hard um I I do sometimes get emotional and that's okay you know wear the waterproof stuff and you know, like I'm a zombie after. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, 
<laughs> Fuji? Melissa, as far as your dad, you know, just to dive into it, I mean, he played with the Eagles from 47 to 55. Led the Eagles probably five out of seven years as the leading receiver outside of two years. And a lot of people don't know, you know, the throwback nostalgia. I myself being the ultimate Eagle diehard fan that I am, like, just love to hear about the nostalgia. You know, everybody today, Reggie White, Ryan Dawkins, uh, Bill Berge, Jaworski, nobody, you know, Chuck Bednarik might be, like, the biggest name from, like, way back when. But those 48 and 49 teams, like, nobody really talks about. And, like, you know, Ray Dittinger, Mr. All Eagle reporter himself, you know, it, it, I always – I love diving into this stuff just to hear about the throwback stuff. And, you know, as you say, your dad was in, trying in the Hall of Fame in 1970, you know, played on the 48 and 49. What was the man like as far as – his fire, his passion. He was a great basketball and football player in high school. Can you touch on a little bit of that stuff? I think you froze up, but I'm going to try to get – you froze up on me. So just kind of talk about who he is. Is that is that what you said or, like, what he was right. like? Just his yeah. passion as a football player. Yeah. You know, just the stories he told you. He, you know, today, so, today's a different, today's a different hour back then. I believe he had, actually, had, he was a two-way player like Chuck and Eric, stuff you don't see today. Yeah, he, so, you know, they, they, they played less games back then. And they also, a lot of his team fought in World War II. So that's a whole different mentality right there. Um, and they they didn't run like, you know, they didn't run three plays and, and sit out. Like they played offense and defense, most of them. And he, he, he did that. Um, he was actually all pro on offense and defense one year. Um, so, and I can't remember which year it was, but he mm – -hmm. He was very serious ab about different um, aspects of life, but then he was kind of funny too at the same time. But he was pretty serious, like, bad for people that I dated and stuff like that because he just like wouldn't talk to him. He'd be like, "Yeah, who? What's your name?" And then he'd be like, "Okay." And then he wouldn't talk. Like I had a boyfriend for like three years, and he didn't say one thing to him. So he just didn't want. He was very protective of me and. Um, he, uh, he, <clears throat> so when I was interviewing some of the players, when I was studying his life, I went up to Philly and I interviewed Bill McCready's, who's also Greek. And he used to be a quarterback for, on my dad's team. And, um, he, he just said that, like, he, this is kind of a funny story. Dad, um, would somebody was stealing his chiclets, which chiclets are like a, I don't know if those are you younger <laughs> um, people, they're type of right. gum, right? So Bill McCready said, okay, I'm going to like do a little test. He switched out the chiclets for, um, you know, a laxative. And <laughs> so my dad was in practice one day and, probably took the chiclets um because he was trying to figure out if it was my dad or not because dad, he'd ask my dad and he'd be like no it's cool like no i didn't yeah so they were in practice and dad just like ran off the field to the bathroom and <laughs> and so he was like that's when i knew he was you know he was stealing my chiclets so <laughs> but but some of those guys too they played so back then when they played they had an all-star college game where they would play uh, the college all-star teams would play a pro team and and some of those guys like Al Wister he he and my dad played a lot together he and Otto Graham and they they played a lot in those college all-star games together and then they got to play uh, together on the field and when I interviewed Al he was he was just he just kept talking about how fun it was to 
play against dad in college or, you know, play on the all-star team too with them. So, and, and then be on a pro team, but, um, but he was serious. He, he only liked certain people. Um, he didn't let people get too close to him, I guess, just because, you know, of who he was. Right. I know just as you were saying about your dad was actually a five time all pro 47, 49, 52 and 55. And I thought he was I, six. Actually. I think he was six times well, with the Eagles at least. He's only been with the Eagles. Right. Yeah. He he and he played nine years too. Um they always have the dates wrong, like on Wikipedia and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um but I think what happened was he was drafted, but he didn't go yet because he was I, I I'm not sure, but I know that they other places I've read they say he played nine years. So because I've I've seen stats for him for nine years too, so I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's what I what I've known my entire life. Because he'd always be like, I you know I played nine years, but this this guy's saying I played seven or whatever, you know. Right. So, right. Yeah. The the one thing you talked about in 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 your NFL films video was that your and, and again as we're as we're talking about Pete here. The when you came up for the dance for your dad, and, and and again we'll get into that here in a second. But when you had talked about how you put in the work, it was something that came from you, uh, inspired by him. But at the very end, when you, you told your dad that you you finally had completed what you were you were doing for him, and you were, as you showed him the video. Your your father had stated, according to the video there, that it, his life was complete because he got to see what you how you performed. For for that moment, and I know losing a parent, no matter how old or how young you are, it's always the toughest thing. Your it just seemed like your your dad knew one was you know his time, but more importantly the time that last dance I guess to say that you guys had together. How meaningful was it at the very end to watch your father's reaction? to see what he, what you had done for him. Oh, it was great. I mean, I, I, I wish I could, I wish he could have been there live. Like I had to show it to him on a video. Right. Um, but um, he was also in the final stages of Alzheimer's. So I, I felt like he was really enjoying it just by his body. Cause he was nonverbal at that point. Um, but he, the way his body was reacting and he would, he would always do these claps, which these claps are, cause it's film and dance. It's this whole like multimedia thing. Um, it's like you're watching a documentary film and then some dancers come on and off stage, if that makes any sense. But yeah. he would clap, like he, he would hear himself, you know, he would hear himself talking and he would react to that or his teammates talking. And so, and then, you know, I'm in it, I'm also on the screen a lot because I'm, you know, like interacting with him. But uh, he he really liked seeing me dancing as well. Um, and I could just tell by the way he would, you know, do this thing and he would clap and he was just having a blast watching it. So um, I and I tried to explain everything to him and. And I explained what I was doing because I would go in with the camera, you know, and be like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to film you today. And we're just, you know, like I would just set it up and sit down with him in like a normal visit. So you, so you could I, I have a lot of memories of him, you know, interacting with him with Alzheimer's. So, yeah, now your, your dad also I, had mentioned too, and on a late interview back in 2000. And, and for those who don't know. Ray Dittinger talks about your dad that he, if if a pass was thrown his way, he never dropped a pass as long as it came in his direction. Looking at footage from your father, which is exactly true because everything that you see, as far as a, that I can recall, watching video after video after video, your dad never dropped the ball. And so he talked about back in 2000 when the question was asked of him, what does he think about the players today? And, and your dad being as open and honest as he possibly could, he said they, they don't work as hard as he did 
when he was coming up. You know, it was a different mentality, different type of play. And, you know, it, it's old school football compared to all the new stuff they end up doing now. But I think your father was very genuine. And when, when, no matter who asked him a question about his game, about how he approached the game, about his family, it was always the same. Like, your dad was very proud of what he had done. And I, and I guess part of that was because the time he had missed out with his own father and how much strength he had to have, I guess, for the entire family, for himself, for you, you know, your mom. So, and it's just, it's genuine to hear the stories from your dad. And I'm pretty sure you have, I mean, tons that you end up sharing. Because like I said, an hour wouldn't be long enough as far as to hear stuff. But something that I guess like an, an NFL reporter, an NFL analyst wouldn't be able to ask would be, how was your dad minus away from the football field? Like when the season was over and he knew he had time to spend with the family, what was one of the things that he would do with, with just with you guys alone prior to, you know, whether the season being started back up or because the season usually end right around the holidays. What was the one thing that he would do once football season was over? Well, you have to remember, too, that my dad was 51 when I was born. So I was not like around. I wish I could have been around when he played. I've watched a lot of, you know, video and he has told me a lot. But um what I know from, I didn't, I did not realize as growing up as a, as a little kid, you know, my dad's 50 years old holding his hand at the hall of fame. Like I didn't realize what that meant. And I didn't realize how good of a player he was because I didn't see him play live. So I had to, that's another reason why I was trying to, you know, keep his memories alive. But he, he was, he was very, he loved going out to dinner. He loved watching TV. He, he would sit every Sunday when it was football season, um, he would sit on his side and play solitaire and just watch TV and play solitaire and watch those games. And he would yell at the TV and do all sorts of things. Um, he didn't, he didn't drink very much. He didn't, um, he would have a drink every once in a while, but he, um, I don't know, his, he's pretty serious, but then fun at the same time with his family, if that makes any sense. And I hope I answered that question. No, I do. <laughs> no it does. It makes, yeah. it makes perfect sense. And I, and I did forget, of course, that you're, you're, he was 51 when, when you were born, but yeah. I guess learning now the history from your dad and, and your mom again, if, and if and I'm going to bring up the video here momentarily so everybody can see, you know, your mom as well, but learning as much as you learn from your dad, is there other things you've discovered that maybe like even not saying your mom would have completely forgotten, but maybe something just from, from his family history that may have not been talked about and you may have just come across it. Um. Hmm. I mean, a lot of it I've talked about, I, I, I mean, his, like his parents are from Greece. They immigrated from Greece. Um, I'm trying to think, I mean, there, there is the, the part that like he had four wives in his lifetime and there's that part of, um, like maybe he was really good at football, but not good at relationships. So oh. something to know. Um, also, I think he was, I mean, it's, it was a thing like, and I think he was struggling from a uh, concussion related um, Ill, like issues at, since I was a kid, because there were some weird things that would happen. Like we would run out of gas all the time. Like who runs out of gas all the time? You know, I mean, maybe, right. maybe other people do, but I'm like on that, like, if it gets even close to E, I'm like, we got to fill it up, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, just little things as I look back, like, I think he was struggling and he didn't know how to, cause he was this big, like proud man. And I don't think he, until it got to a certain point, then he came to me and was like, look. I, there's something going on with me because he completely like would disregard things that were happening. Right. And so I think that that's something that I think gets like sort of pushed under, you know, yeah, 
there, there are some things that were causing him to show signs of all of that. And he's, people see him as this hall of famer and, um, you know, this, you know, not like, not celebrity, but people want to know about him, but then they don't know that side, the, you know, the struggle side and the different wives and there's half siblings of mine and all sorts. So. Mm -hmm. Listen, um, listen, as you talk about your dad with maybe concussions back then, which, you know, they didn't have that protocol like they do today. Like, do you know, like of his fellow teammates that he, um, Steve Van Muir and Tommy Thompson, guys that he played with like later on in life, maybe suffering from like concussion, concussions like they did in the old days, Chuck Benner. And so on. Yes. Yes. All of them. All of them that you just mentioned. Yes. Because I've seen it. I've, I saw, I went up for 2007, the 75th anniversary. Uh, I don't know. They had this big thing, and mom and I went up for that because dad couldn't go. Dad was still alive, but he couldn't go. Nice. And, I, and, and I've talked to all of them, all of their kids, you know, and they, 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 Mike and Steve Van Buren and Chuck Butnerick, yes, they definitely had either Alzheimer's or, or dementia. Yeah. And Tommy Thompson, I think Ray will tell you that too. So, yeah, a lot of up, those guys. I'm going to bring up a video so that people can see him. By the way, you guys can find this on YouTube and YouTube, the. Boy. <laughs> Should I say Facebook? So Facebook hopefully will not stop this feed because Facebook is notorious for stopping stuff when I bring it up on YouTube. So hopefully everyone will still be able to see this and the show will continue. But I want to bring up the video feed from uh, from the NFL films. Um, as far as you and your mom, one, visiting your dad, and two, just a little bit of the story behind it. Just give me a big old echo. So that didn't work the way I wanted to. Let's see. Give me one second here. If it doesn't work, we'll go back. Nope. Good Lord. Nope. That didn't work. Okay. So I tried to make it work. Unfortunately, it didn't. So we'll go back to. Again, our normal schedule program. Unfortunately, new software sometimes doesn't like to work out the way it wants to. I'm getting a bad reverb and echo here, so I don't want to blow anybody's ears. But when you, when again, visiting your dad and, and, and your mom, obviously she's still alive, but with with you guys just going to the site and in, in the moments you end up sharing, and how often do you get back to, one, to, to see your dad, and two, how much do you physically talk to them about whether it be in modern life. Because some people, to, to explain to some folks, I know some people think that it may be weird that people talk to their loved one after they're gone. To me, it's one of those things that you still share memories and moments until you get to see them again. And if you ever watch, there's a crazy Netflix documentary and Netflix, you're welcome, where it talks about the, the, the afterlife of people on how they want to, I, I guess, reconnect with their family members, which is, and, and I'll talk about that on another episode. But when you go back to see your dad, how much more do you share for what goes on today, not only in, in your own personal life, but what goes on with society today? Um, well, I totally believe in what, and I watched that show too. So I believe that they're, uh, they're giving us signs. I, I talked to him. Um, I He gave me a ton of signs. He's given me a lot of signs throughout after his death, just little things where I'd, I'd be having to make a decision and some, you know, like his number would pop up somewhere, you know, like when I, when we were going to France to, um, <clears throat> to shoot for the NFL films thing, our parking spot was 35, like at the airport. I just thought oh, wow. just little things like that. So I totally believe in that. So I go, I go visit him at his grave because it's it's not far from my mom's house in Winston Salem, North Carolina. 
Right. Um, and I go there often. I go like, you know, four, four times a year, maybe five. I go up. It's not too far. It's like eight hours. It's not a bad drive. Um, and then I go to the Hall of Fame every year and I feel like I can spend time with him there as well. And then he's just always in my heart too. So I, I'm not sure he might have. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now uh, y'all are up. <laughs> Well, Melissa, let me let me ask you real quick. Uh, you mentioned your dad served in, in in the military, and he served in the the World War. You know that that had to be such a, a interesting time, especially in sports, because you see all these stories, obviously in baseball, where they you know you see obviously you saw they had different leagues and stuff they were running and such. But for your dad, like after World War II, like what like was he still wanting to play football after that? Like what was his kind of mindset after that? Because I'd imagine he had to see a lot of things, especially serving in, in, in such a, you know, a horrific war in World War II, obviously. Yeah. So he was in the 35th infantry. So they saw a lot of, a lot of battle, like, like fighting. Mm -hmm. um, they were in mm -hmm. Normandy battle of the bulge. They were, um, they stormed a bunch of places. They would just go in and storm. They were, you know, under general Patton and he never liked to talk about it. And, you know, I'm in like grade school or, you know, eighth grade. And I'm like, Hey, I have to do a report on world war two. And he's like, uh, I'm, I, you know, I can't talk about it really. Like mm -hmm. he, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't even say that. Like he would just be like, no, nope. You know, like I would ask him to help. That was the only thing he would not help me with was talking about that. Um, he did, as he got older, share a little like we watched Saving Private Ryan together. And like I said, in the um, mm -hmm. NFL films thing and and we watched the beginning and I just kind of turned to him and I said, was it like that? And he was like, yep. And that's all oh, he would wow. say, you know, and he talked, well, he did say the water was really bloody. He said there was so much blood. Like it was, he said it was just kind of running down his, you know, him because there was just blood everywhere, but he didn't, he didn't want to talk about it. So I think, I mean, now they're doing research on trauma and all the things that cause trauma and I think he had a lot of trauma and I think um, football was sort of an outlet for him. But I, I don't think it scared him. I also thought it was a way for him. Maybe he had some, you know, anxiety or trauma from, and it was a way for him to, you know, kind of like me and dance, like mm -hmm. you, you got to do what you need to do to like yeah. feel better. Um, mm -hmm. and your then frustrations the whole, out. Yeah. And you know, hit hit somebody <laughs> you know <laughs> not, not that i hit people i'm not like condoning violence or anything like that but i think you know knowing like in dance like knowing choreography and knowing where you're supposed to go like i'm sure it's the same thing with with football like mm -hmm. knowing the plays you've got to run for that game and going this way and then you know spinning or turning at this point in time I think it's, I mean, it, it's all choreographed, whether you want to call it football or dance, like it's choreography, really. They're, yeah. they're drawing out movement. That's what they're doing. So um, I think I'd be good at choreographing plays, but, <laughs> 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 but um, anyway, yeah, I think, I think he'd like that. You get in a zone and you're like, I've got to go here. And then I'm the next thing I'm going to do is this. And I think that was really helpful for him. And then the whole mentality of coming back from a war, like mm -hmm. I'm, I watched this uh, history of the Philadelphia Eagles. It was like an NFL films thing. And, uh, you know, like, do you give these guys a curfew? Like after they've been fighting in World War II? Like, no, <laughs> right? you know, they're, they're, they got their own, <laughs> I don't know. They're not going to go out and like get, get, wasted and not be able to play you know so. now before we get into some other nfl topics here because one last thing i want to kind of wrap up with and, and by the way for those uh who are tuning in um we have melissa uh Fios on with us her dad pete 
uh, formerly an NFL champion, Hall of Famer. Um, so the late great Pete, who played in 1948-1949 for the Philadelphia Eagles when they won their back-to-back NFL championships. And listen, I talked about earlier as far as like dancing. I, I love to dance. Um, the gentleman who, I don't know where he's at in your part of the screen, but he looks like he's right below you here. For those who don't know, and and as much as we all love to dance, I, I don't know as far as like Dylan, Sean looks like he, he can actually get down pretty good, but I had a video for Fuji, and unfortunately I can't play it tonight, but for those who remember in the Philly market, back when Dancing on Air was around, was Fuji right. was a regular at I 4 o'clock on PHL 17. So I, I want everyone <laughs> that to understand that lie. he was if the was, Danny Terrio back in the day. <laughs> Danny Terrio, really? Danny you Terrio. Said, but you said John Travolta, right? So, And you told me that Danny was the one that trained John Travolta. So there That's you go. That's what I heard. I, don't, I wasn't there. That's obvious. <laughs> So, but so <laughs> Melissa, he, he is a dance machine. In, in all seriousness, well, I've seen the man dance, and he can get I'd, down. I'd like I to retire. really see this. You know, I'm a <laughs> dance competition judge too, so I could like uh, score you. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. Do that. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. The, the the next time you come on, either the next time you come on, or what we'll do is we'll all send a video of of our dancing skills, and then I'll send it to you. And we'll we'll start with Sean first, then Dylan. The Godfather, and then myself. The Godfather is going to blow everybody away. I'm just telling you that right now. There's well, no competition. I've seen the man myself live in person. So, well, 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 Angel, I could, I could broadcast this now. I mean, come, like this could be like Dancing with the Stars. Like I could be like the broadcast. Don't try to stuff, get out of so. it. You're trying to get out awesome. of it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Listen, listen. I got my broadcast background, so we can add. We can make this like a whole production. We could, you know what, Dylan? Uh, well, we're gonna set this up, and uh, I'm gonna have Melissa judging everybody. So you're you're absolutely yes. right. So let's, it'll be fun. I think it'll be a fun episode. Fuji, come on, Godfather. You know you're gonna blow everybody out the water. I I see. Listen, the man's got moves. It's ridiculous. I it, he will make Ken play look just just dumb. I'll just leave it at that. But it's okay. What? Don't be shy. Come on, Godfather. You know you got moves. A fan shot. It's <laughs> making me laugh. I wasn't on that shot. Yes, he was. Listen, everybody, once again, if you're listening from Brazil or Australia, he used to be, look up Dancing on Air on YouTube, and you'll see it. It's a little speckle on there, but you'll see the Godfather on there. Four o'clock every single day he was there. He, he wouldn't miss it. Matter of fact, he would take the L from his house downtown and be in the studio, so don't, by all means, don't listen to him. He was there. <laughs> but besides that point, for everyone here in the room, and, and Sean, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll pass this one off to, here, to you here, because Kyler Murray... Gets a $230 million contract. We've got about some five minutes left here in the show, but he gets a $230 million contract. And it's not as much as far as when it comes to the money because obviously the contract's going up and up and up. But more importantly, that he never watched gameplay footage. How ridiculous is that? Is a, the expectations, and you know, in high school, in college, that's something that was just put into you over and over again. But yet they have to put in this contract that he's got to watch at least a five minutes of gameplay footage, whether it was from a previous game or from the week before. And as I say that, Sean goes away. So Fuji getting the filling in. There's Sean. He's back. So how ridiculous does it seem that you have to put that into a contract? I think he's gone still. Well, no, he's 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 back. Oh, there you go. He's back. There he is. He didn't say really it again, take John? the playbook. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, no, say it again. What you were saying? He he really didn't take uh, the playbook serious, you know. And now they put uh, clauses in his contract where no video games, no going out, stuff like that, because he didn't really take the game serious. But to get 160 million guarantee, 60 million guarantee is pretty pretty crazy, don't you think? Yeah, because oh, you got to you got to figure absolutely. out how much more. I'm sorry, go ahead, Fuji. I was going to say, absolutely, because the guy's a hell of a talent, but, I, I mean, usually the guys that want to win, the do win, are the first one in camp and the last one to leave and during the season, you know, at the stadium with practice. Like, you know, put all that stuff away. You got all the time in the offseason to be doing that besides going on vacation. I mean, they signed him because Lamar Jackson's contract's up next. And what's he going to get paid out of these yeah. quarterbacks? Mm -hmm. 
But not only that, and and so Melissa, before, because I don't like to put anybody on the spot here, have have you been keeping up with anything as, as far as the NFL, what's been going on lately? Can you hear us, Melissa? I don't know if she could hear us. Oh, you're you're asking me. Sorry, yeah. I didn't hear my name. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> what what was the question again? Because I have just meant like sure. Have, have you been keeping up? up with the latest as far as what's been happening in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I haven't. So this summer was slightly crazy for me. So. I don't know the exact from the summer, but I do keep up with pretty much everything. And then I'll go to a few of these meetings and stuff this coming week um, where they kind of lay things out um, with the Hall of Fame is connected to the NFL, you know. So, but I don't, I don't know what's going on like this week, but I do normally keep up with it. But okay. there's a lot going on right now. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's why I, I rather ask before I, I say something else here. So Fuji out yeah. and matter and Dylan, I believe me, I didn't forget about the Bucks, so I got you here for a moment. But you have D will Samuel uh Fuji over there for the 49ers. First they said he wanted to get traded. Well, he wanted to be traded, not that they wanted to trade him. He wanted to get traded. Now he's you know he's still with the team, but with the contract disputes, and not only him, there's two other players as well, one from Seattle, I believe one from Denver. He came These back guys, to- yeah. So they show up for practice, but they're not practicing because they're holding out for the contracts. And I blame this going back to Zico Elliott when he held off for that massive contract and has done absolutely nothing since getting that massive contract. Oh. And to the point where even Dallas is saying that he may not have his starting job coming up this upcoming season. So all this stuff that these guys end up doing, holding out, doing all these different types of shenanigans, does the NFL need to do a much better job at this point? tighten up things where these guys aren't able to do things like this just to show up and then we're still waiting to get paid. Well, I believe it. So I'm not sure about this, but I believe in their collective bargaining agreement where they're, I believe they're not allowed to practice until if they get a new deal. So yeah, but mean, they're still in a deep. contract. Right. I know they're on their, what do you call it? Rookie contracts. I believe it's DK Metcalf. Darwin James of the Chargers <clears throat> and Debo Debo Samuel, which yeah. two of the three are on rookie contracts. But I don't know why they're not out practicing. But you know, if they were to hold out, they'd be fine, just like back in the day. A lot of these guys would be fine. What's your take, Sean? I mean, you got you got to play. You get you get paid to play. You know, mm-hmm. and I think they should just. Shut up and play and just go about the business. It's us as the fans watching them put a good product out and, you know, give their blood, sweat, and tears on the field. Well, you know, and just the thing of it is, you know, I mean, a lot of these guys, yeah. a lot of the guys are prima donnas, you know, nowadays. Yeah. You know, oh. so, but what is your take? My. My take is, I mean, the quarterbacks, it started with Aaron Rodgers getting paid the big money, $50 million a year. Now, the you know, you look at A.J. Brown before he – and this is the only way how he did the deal was if he would sign a four $100 million deal to play for the Eagles for the next four years. It was um, – what's his name? The one to the Raiders. Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams, Adams, another one, man. Uh, a couple other guys that got the big the wide receivers are like just following Cooper suit, Cup, just like the, uh, mm-hmm. like the quarterbacks now. It's like, you know, they're getting all the big money and everybody else is following suit. That's why, like I mm-hmm. just to say what I was saying before about Kyler Murray got his contract way before Lamar Jackson's still on his rookie deal. So, you know, he's next to get paid. And the Cardinals just probably just threw the money just to get him under contract this way. When Lamar Jackson gets paid, you know, Kyler Murray's contract goes up even more. Just like with Jalen Hurts now, it's it's a make or break year. The Eagles going to decide to pay him $35, $40 million for the next four to five years if he makes it. And so I'll wait till after the season with that. Right. You got to wait till after the season for Hurts. Uh, you course. just can't. You, 
you can't go, okay, week three, week five, here you go. You earned it. No. Exactly. Right. Ride the season out and do that. We have the weapons. Now we got to see what kind of product it is going to be on the field, you know? Exactly. So. Well, we're going to wrap up here with, of course, the uh, local Tampa correspondent here, also the AKA Toronto Blue Jay, the AKA Houston Texan. But with that, <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, the Bucks so far not starting off so well, and it's only day two of training camp. Big injury coming off the Bucks. Let everyone know exactly who was hurt and for how long. Yeah, so well, we don't know how long yet. So uh, luckily, right now, you know everything's still in testing stages. Uh, obviously, this just happened today, but I was at training camp today, and unfortunately, this is not what you. Hope to see happen uh, when there's no pads being worn because you obviously are used to seeing the guys getting injured a lot of times with the pads on and them actually going full contact. But Ryan Jensen, unfortunately, suffered a knee injury today. And from a lot of the local r reporters, it, they are saying that it is not looking very good. So uh, luckily, it happened early on in camp. I think if you're the Bucks, you'd like that happening early on in camp. You could kind of figure some stuff out. Maybe go out and sign a free agent. Maybe make a deal somewhere here in the remaining few weeks they have left of training camp. But uh, yeah, unfortunate news for the Bucks because Ryan Jensen is a big leader on this team and a big piece of this offensive line. And uh, you know, if we had Ali Marpet, we might be able to slide Marpet maybe over to that center position, give him some reps like he did a few years ago. But uh, yeah, tough loss for the Bucks, and uh, it's gonna be interesting to see who's gonna be blocking my best friend Tom Brady. Which, by the way, Fuji, <laughs> I I told Angel this. I called you yesterday, Angel, and I have to just say this real quick. Uh, Fuji, you posted on Twitter, "Siege the day." You know that was the Bucks hashtag back in the day. So I am assuming you are now a Bucks fan. Uh, I said Bucks the fan. day. I, uh, I so said seize. You, I didn't say siege. It's it's close. S C I Z E. <laughs> if you want, if but you I'm want just to pull it up and pull it and show it on the show, your time's yours, my man. And well, listen, it's close enough. But I'm just <laughs> saying, uh, I'm just throwing it out there. That's just you really want to open that can of worms. You really want <laughs> you me to go it. down the Tom Brady situation. So here. what are your so what are your thoughts on them signing Julio Jones, Dylan? Very excited about that. Um, you know, it adds depth to the receiving core. Um, obviously, we have, uh, which I guess Sean just left, but uh, uh, for the fans out there, regardless, um, uh, excited that Julio's with the team. He's a great receiver. He's been injured the last few years, obviously, but uh, he's a great receiver. And obviously, uh, when you have a chance to, you know, play for a guy like Tom Brady, who, you know, is one of the best quarterbacks of all time and, can possibly get you to the promise for and get, get a guy a ring. I mean, that's, that's a huge deal for a lot of these guys, you know, I mean, for most of these guys, they, they want to have a Super Bowl championship before their career's over. So, uh, you know, exciting to see Kyle Rudolph join the team and, and Julio Jones, I think it uh, adds some depth, obviously losing Gronkowski is a, a big piece. Um, so having Kyle Rudolph join in and now Julio Jones, it just adds to our, already pretty decent team. I think we have a good team heading into this upcoming season and uh, definitely are going to contend for an NFC championship possibly. Yep. Well, I, <laughs> I see I Fuji do. already shaking his head. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, well, you know where I stand. <laughs> you know where before, I stand. Yeah, before he gets fired up, let me let me bring in the sponsors here so we can end the show because I know he'll get riled up. But thank you, by the way, to Philly Sports Trips and visit phillysportstrips.com. If you guys want to travel with the pros, travel with Philly Sports Trips. And don't forget, fill the bus. We're looking to take the trip down here to DCU. Yes, we do not call them the Washington Commanders. They are still the District of Columbia University team, as all of us know. And by the way, speaking of, I can't believe that Dan Snyder was not subpoenaed under oath that we'll get into maybe on Tuesday night because that to me seems absolutely ridiculous. But nevertheless, if you guys want to travel, whether it be into Arizona, any of the away games, please travel with phillysportstrips.com. The Arizona trip, I believe, is all but sold out, but there are plenty of other trips that are left. And if you guys have not traveled with Vince Rizzuto and the rest of the crew, you are definitely missing out from the tailgate experience to the experience altogether. So please visit phillysportstrips.com. And fill the bus up down to DCU because, yes, 
Broad Street South will have their own bus. And if you guys missed the update today, there's about 485 people on the bus trip signed up so far. So we are trying to sell out our bus to have fun. Fuji, if you guys don't know, we'll be driving that bus. And it'll be nothing better than Fuji behind the wheel on the way yeah. down 95 South. So <laughs> it's going to be That's a great the highway time. highway to hell. <laughs> it's, uh, it's gonna be a great time with fuji <laughs> behind the wheel and also don't forget that uh, with philly the south at tampa joe's in 9316 anderson road in beautiful tampa florida a hop skip and a jump as i said earlier from the airport the kickoff play uh, the kickoff party for the season will happen september 11th and if you guys travel down to tampa and you want to watch being home away from home tampa joe's is definitely the place to be so visit tampajoes.com for a serious place Serious food and a fun place to go to all season long, sir. They're not just there during football season. It's always open seven days a week. Mike Goodwin and his crew out there do an excellent job. Along with Rob, the GM. So look for it. And also, if you want to find out more information as far as the kickoff tailgate party, look under the Facebook page, Philly the South, Mike Klein, and the rest of the crew doing a fantastic job trying to put that together. It is a team effort. So look under Philly the South, and you guys can sign up for if you're going, if you're attending and throughout the season, of course, I'll be down there live broadcasting from the Tampa side of it in Philly. Of course, Fuji will be in Philly on that end aspect as well until next week, which he'll be on vacation, so he won't be on the show, but we'll see him back when he comes back again. And also to Larry Gilman, if you guys need terminal payment solutions for your credit cards and or apparel, please visit lgdirect.net for all your payment solutions and apparel needs. So visit lgdirect.net, also to bigstarsports.com. You guys can catch him Monday through Friday, 10 to 12, with Andy Kalu on In the Trenches, Sports Talk 790, bigstarsports.com, his partnership along with us, and Philly Sports Trips. It is a great combination. If you guys miss seeing his podcast, along with him being busy with the Houston Texans and the Houston Astros, visit bigstarsports.com. Of course, you can visit all this through BroadStreetSouth.com, BroadSCSouth.com, and also to the Pretzel House, where we'll be live in August. We delayed the start from the podcast being there as well, but visit the Pretzel House, H-A-U-S.com, and mention that Broad Street South sent you, and then when you order it through the app, they'll give you 10% off your order, once again, at PretzelHouse.com. That will be coming up shortly. Dylan will be joining me there at the Pretzel House uh, I, for a couple of them because now he's going to be busy down there. Ray J, God knows what else he dives into. So uh, that's it, folks. We will see you come next week on Tuesday, minus the Godfather. He will be tanning out there with Danny Terrio and John Travolta in some crazy Mexican island. So he'll be getting his dance groove on and everything else. But Melissa, thank you once again for joining us this evening. We will see you when you return back again from the Hall of Fame. So, uh, have fun and be safe out there at the hall. Thank you. I really Thank enjoyed you for, it. Thank you for Thank coming you. on. We appreciate Thank it. You, Melissa. Yeah. So awesome. hopefully the outro will work out just well. And thank you to my lovely producer over at Studio B. We do appreciate everything that she does as well for the show. So with that being said, we hope that the exit outro ends up working the way it's supposed to. We will see everyone again on Tuesday night. Enjoy your night. And enjoy the weekend. Go Birds. 